How long have you been thinking of this? What uh, triggered you to, to go down this path? Oh, gosh. Well, agriculture education and, uh, and, and working with kids has been kind of something I've been very devoted and passionate about for years. Here at Newbauer Farms, we started our agriculture education program back in 2005. And uh, it, in parallel, I was working in special education and early intervention. So working with children um, and their families, lots of the kids had special needs. There was, uh, you know, developmental delays and concerns. And what I seen when I was out working in early learning environments was that there was a huge disconnect between the food that was being presented to the children, even how they played with food. So instead Instead of giving kids a uh, real orange to peel um, in their, you know, kitchen discovery centers, they'd have a, a plastic orange held together with Velcro and a plastic knife to cut it apart. And so I looked in those instances and thought, man, we've kind of outsmarted ourselves. When did we decide that we should replace real, you know, food with plastic food and uh, and thereby uh, sacrificing kids' meaningful experiences? And so as that as that disconnect. Uh, became so evident to me and the fact that I lived on a farm and and the things that I took for granted I mean we grew a garden when I was a kid we raise our own beef we have our own laying hens <clears throat> it uh, it kind of dawned on me the light switch turned on and I thought meaningful experiences for children uh, where they can explore and learn about agriculture are few and far between. And I was really fortunate to work with a very uh, ex young and uh, enthusiastic kindergarten teacher. And I went and had a chat with her and I said, hey, how about if we load the kids on the bus, the facility I worked for, we had our own beautiful little blue bus that we could just use at Liberty for field trips. And I said, here's an idea. Bring your kids out to my farm. Um, it's springtime. We've got calves and foals and chickens and eggs and the garden is being planted bring your kids out and and I I want to observe them in in a natural environment and uh, so she she totally agreed she was she was down with that and we did some programming and planned some activities for the kids when they came out and it, truly it was magic it was magical seeing kids that uh, because I had that special needs um, background working with children with special needs seeing kids out in the garden you know digging in the soil finding worms um, you know touching different leaves and different textures it was like magic I mean instead of creating uh you know a sensory bin full of dirt in the classroom we just brought the classroom out to the farm and it dawned on me at that point in time that ag education uh is something that all kids should receive. So from there, uh, we developed our program here at Newbauer Farms uh, in 2013. Our yard underwent a, a major transformation and we really set it up so that it could be uh, designed as an agriculture classroom. So from there to here, uh, we've since hosted over 20,000 students and, uh, and, and their teachers. So there, there's, I've kind of lost count. I didn't always count the adults. Over 5,000 adults have traveled to our farm as well in quest of knowledge. You know, let's find that elusive carrot. Carrots grow in the ground. Tomatoes grow on the vine. And what I found is that um, as much as the children needed uh, to have an understanding, it was also teachers who benefited by coming to the farm as well and asking questions. So um, what happened then was uh, COVID and that tapped the brakes on everything, kind of kind of uh, shut down my, my farm tours and um, gave me a chance to sit back and reflect. And, and actually, that's my silver lining with COVID-19 is I live a very busy life. We farm full time. We've got teenage kids. And, uh, and then we do this ag education gig just kind of on the side. But when the students weren't coming to the farm anymore, I had a chance to think, how can this be bigger? I want to take this. I want to take this to a different level. Um, I want to educate beyond my gate. And so I spent a good chunk of the, the last year developing a, a, a proposal of what ag education could look like if it was site-based, located right on a playground, right on the school grounds. Uh, so I created a very in-depth uh, proposal with a, a budget and um, infrastructure based on all of the trials and tribulations uh, that we've experienced here on our farm the past 15 years. So there was a lot of, uh, you know, mistakes that we've made that I was able to, <laughs> they, the, that prayer 
Prairie Rose has really become the beneficiary of because we can avoid those bear traps. Uh, so I took the proposal to Prairie Rose leadership. Uh, Prairie Rose Public Schools is uh, an amazing school division. Very fortunate to have both of our kids educated uh, in their walls. Uh, my son is the, uh, he's, he's so fortunate. He's in a uh, flight academy program. So he's working on getting his private pilot's license in school, has has had a huge in interest in flying ever since he was a little guy. So they do they do school different instead of just having, you know, standardized uh, classes and, and options for students. They like to come to the students uh, to meet them where their learning is. And, and so they they seen the Urban School Agriculture Discovery Center as a tremendous opportunity to really inspire and uh, and educate uh, rural youth attending and urban. There's a, a nice mix of urban and rural in urban uh, to teach them more about agriculture. So that's kind of where it all has, has come from and that's what's led us here. That's an incredible story sort of thing and it just sounds awesome that you've been through this journey sort of thing and been able to share your knowledge uh, in regards to it sort of thing. So where's the, the infrastructure and the, and the site? How, how's that coming along? So uh, it's it's actually all the bones are in place. So we're really excited because it uh, it, it is what it is. It, it is what it's going to be. Uh, a lot of pressure on on us. I mean, this is a project that my husband, well, our family essentially has taken on in partnership with Prairie Rose. Um, and so we we ordered all the infrastructure and materials and. And and then we've been setting it up about the last two weeks in parallel with harvest. <laughs> so we've been harvesting out at our farm in Irvine. Uh, my son drives a combine, so Mark in between um, truck dumps, in between uh, filling the semi, he'd have enough time to come and play some corral panels. So we have a, a 40 by 60 soft, soft shell uh coverall building and that's going to be our learning pavilion it's where we'll store all of our supplies and materials you know uh benches basically a feed where it, we needed a, a an internal structure so that we could protect all of our um things that we require to to run the site and then we've got calf shelters with um freestanding corral panel pens so those go together like lego we were able to put them uh together quite quickly uh and then we have some some larger paddocks that'll be used by our larger livestock so we plan to have uh tiny in numbers but a representation of all livestock um from from a couple of feeder steers to a cow that'll be in calf who will actually calve on site some dairy goats meat goats uh pigs chickens and some market lambs as well so the kids will you know even though it's just a one of uh when we're talking about creature comforts and uh, responsibility of you know the the code of practice when you're raising livestock whether you have one or a hundred the the same concepts apply then we'll we also have a large um open space where we're going to grow produce and also have have some small crop plots as well. So what do lentils look like? What's flax? What's what's wheat? What are you know some of the the crops that are uh, grown in our area? And then and then we can expand it so much more and say how do we add value to those crops? Where do they go throughout the world? So it's a micro farm. It's a it's a tiny farm with a global perspective. And as I said, this is based on your farm, is it? It is. It's a. Uh, it's based on our farm. So our farm served as a bit of a template, and uh, and and the the parts and pieces that we have on our farm. We have the small animal pens. We have a large discovery garden. We have the pavilion here on our farm. Those were kind of the the main bones that we feel are necessary for uh, optimum learning. So we've we've incorporated uh, that all into into our discovery center. Plus. Um, you know, we kind of had to, we had to design our farm around already where a bunch of infrastructure is in place where this has been designed with the sole purpose of educating students about agriculture. So it's, it's really friendly, like there's really nice flow of how it's set up. And uh, the there's a, a greenhouse and a chicken coop with uh, the flip up egg nest boxes on the outside. So students will be able to gather eggs from the outside um, on gravel, because we're going to talk about biosecurity and, you know, health of, of life livestock there's there's just endless opportunities to tie it all back to curricula great i guess uh as you roll through this sort of thing are you guys going to have uh, extra help come out sort of thing to to help with with the uh with the center 
Yeah, definitely. So, so the vision uh, for the Ag Discovery Centre is that it's student-led. And so we see some incredible opportunities to develop really uh, leadership skills in the kids. And um, what, we're, what we're going to encourage, and I have a, a brainstorming session with the staff of, of Urban School on the 25th of August. So we're going to really like, like the, I have a vision for how I'd like it to work, but every vision is made stronger with synergies from others. So at this point in time, what I'd like to do is have uh Students that'll be assigned uh, will have, you know, a rotating schedule for kids that live right in the hamlet of Irvine or, you know, the kids that are close by on farms and ranches that'll have responsibility to come and do chores uh, on the weekends, on long weekends um, to, to look after the, the livestock. And there'll be, you know, a very, you know, specific checklist of things that need to be done. We already have some uh, retired farmers or ranchers that live right in the Irvine community that have come along and said, hey, if I can help out in any way, even if I can just be an emergency contact or you need someone to mix up a bottle to feed your bottle calves, I'm all in. So we're really embracing that because it is something that's going to be really uh, community driven. And then what some of the biggest challenges with something like this is that we lose our students and staff the end of June. And so then how does this maintain through the major growing season, the major months? Uh, so worked into the plan is uh, the hiring of a couple of summer students. So I'd love to hire maybe some college or university students that are interested in or, you know, pursuing agriculture degrees or studies in agriculture science or livestock uh, to come and work at the site and the thing that that provides is not only will they look after all of the living creatures um, and making sure that everything's thriving so the garden and the, the the livestock will be in good hands every single day during the summer but we're also going to open the site up as an interpretive stop along the number one highway so we've kind of got that little ag tourism piece embedded in it uh, and there'll be produce that'll be available to harvest in the garden there'll be eggs from the hens we'll we'll have um, a cooler a fridge located we have we have water and power ser services into the site so there'll be a fridge where folks can stop by if they're on their way to beautiful cypress hills to go camping the local community will have a sign on the highway inviting people to come in and explore and and folks are really hungry to learn more about where their food comes from to to you know get up close and personal and you know maybe milk a goat or or gather eggs so we'll, 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 we'll give some of those authentic experiences and we'll have those um, uh, summer students who will serve as interpreters uh, as well. They'll do double, double duty. They'll look after maintaining everything, but they'll also be interpreters for the program during the summer. And then it'll still be a thriving enterprise when the students return to school in September. Awesome. You talked a little bit about bridging the gaps sort of in between urban and agriculture. And I just obviously just read, I'm sure you've read the Simpson report that uh, Kim McConnell helped put together recently. And he says, we've never been further apart. So I think, how does this help bridge that? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question because, you know, at the, the heart of, of everything that I do within agriculture is, is that whole piece of, of public trust and social license. And, you know, there, as that, as that disconnect widens, um, you know, we've, we've, we've had people that have become, um, so far removed from agriculture and farming and, and farming, let's face it, in the last 20 years, we have progressed at an amazing rate thanks to science and technology. I mean, you know, it's not your grandpa's farm anymore. <laughs> and so what happens is because of that knowledge gap, um, a lot of folks who have the ability to guide policy, who have influence over the hows and, and, and where and, you know, how we use our land, how we farm, uh, licensing for particular um, crop protection or research and development, um, that can be impeded simply because the knowledge gap is so wide. Um, I have a quote, and I think I'm going to actually hang it up in the Ag Discovery Center, and it goes like this. It's by Baba Diom. I don't know if you've heard it, but it says, in the end, we will only conserve what we love, and we will only love what we understand, and we will only understand what we are taught. 
So in agriculture, we're very good at going on social media and having some, you know, banter with folks that have an opposing opinion of ours. And we're, you know, we're righteous in saying, this is how we do it. You know, don't question our practice. It's the best. But there are risk benefits and consequences to every single human activity, even breathing. We breathe in oxygen, we expel carbon dioxide. Well, <laughs> yeah, so that CO2 maybe is, is something we need to think about. But what's the risk if we don't breathe? <laughs> so agriculture, you know, for every action, there's a reaction. And I think we need to just open our gates and welcome people to learn and understand more about how we make our decisions, the, the, the how and the why behind the result. Um, so for, for the Ag Discovery Center, our central theme is going to revolve around one main objective. And that objective is, and we're going to ask this of all of our students from K to 9, how do we feed over 9 billion people in a sustainable fashion by 2050? And so we'll define sustainability for these kids and we'll, we'll develop their critical thinking skills through system analysis. Um, our students, the older students certainly will be able to analyze many different agriculture models, local, national, global, and, and they can, uh, they can evaluate the efficacy of, of each, each model. Um, will, the bottom line is, is, is it socially responsible? Is it environmentally sustainable? Is it environmentally sound? And is it financially viable? And so, even, you know, everything, everything that we are going to do on our mini farm, um, if we have kids that say, you know, yes, I, I believe that organic agriculture is, is the way to go, and they, they can come up with their thesis behind why that is, then we're going to do some, some side by side uh, demonstrations and say, okay, so here's this, and, and then, then here's more of a conventional agriculture model, and let them see the difference. Um, let them ask the questions and, uh, and, and we plan to bring in subject matter experts from the outside who can provide, you know, the information, the facts, they, they can ask the tough questions and then in turn our students will become ambassadors of agriculture. They will, they will have, have lived, uh, they will have lived, um, and experienced and then we'll, we'll then be able to speak with confidence about the work that we're doing and, and what we discover and uncover along the way. That's so in depth. That's awesome. Um, I guess Nicole, anything you'd like to add that I haven't asked you? Uh, I actually one one part uh, about um, again because I was developing this in parallel with COVID while I had teenage kids at home on screens learning via Google Classroom. Uh, one of the things that we we intend to do, which um, maybe is a little bit new or innovative, uh, is is we're going to have a urban rural outreach program. So we've seen that online learning can be quite an effective platform. We know that social media is very effective, and we also also know that our children are tremendous producers of information. As parents, sometimes we think maybe that what they're producing is, <laughs> is maybe only purely for entertainment value, but it can also be for educational value. So uh, because we are linking with a, a school division, we are going to connect with schools from whether it be inner city Calgary, Edmonton, Montreal, Vancouver, through the power of the digital age, the world has become much smaller. And so our students are going to learn, well, they're going to, first of all, for the first year, they're going to become ambassadors of agriculture. They're going to learn how to speak with confidence about agriculture. They're going to learn uh, how to, from subject matter experts, they're going to learn how to um, answer the challenging questions in a non-challenging way, because that's, you know, that's where collaboration and, and that's where people can start meeting in the middle. So we're going to equip those students with those those good communication and leadership skills and then we're going to reach out so when the grade four students at urban school are studying reducing waste in our world and we have a full-fledged vermicomposting project on the go where we use all of the organic material from the lunch kits and turn it into worm casting so that then go into our garden uh, they'll have that whole system they'll have been very much part of the design and the development of it and we'll then reach out to a school in inner city calgary that that's learning about reducing waste in our world. And our kids can talk with them about, you know, how they're doing it. And maybe we can build our own, you know, vermicomposting uh, 
uh, materials and complete with worms and, and the shop students can build a box or whatever, we can come up with a system that we can then send to that inner city school in Calgary, you know, courtesy of the Urban Egg Discovery Center. So, so we're looking for that outreach. We're going to teach our kids how to be producers and how to be um, uh, wise consumers of social media marketing. Uh, agriculture is, is so, there's so much information out there. So we're going to teach our kids how to, how to consume media in such a way that they're doing it with intelligence. And in the end, they're making wise decisions based on that. So um, the, the absolute uh, curriculum connections are, are endless. There's uh, so many opportunities. And, and where the beauty of this partnership comes in is that we have the teachers who are the experts on their curricula, what they need to teach. And then we're going to bring the agriculture community together. So essentially what the Urban School Agriculture Discovery Center is going to do is, is bring people together for a common shared interest. And that interest is where does our food come from and how do we feed people in a sustainable manner? And, uh, and, and so that's really, really exciting to me. Uh, one final thing that we're going to do is develop um, the entrepreneurial spirit in students. Uh, we will be close closing the farm down from October till April. So we're, we're at, at the beginning stages now, we're, we're going to take a break through the winter. I believe that you're best to not bite off more than you can chew. <laughs> so we're going to manage those, those the active growing months and the production months uh, with a fine tooth comb and we may expand into winter or we may not. It, 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 just because we don't have livestock on site, we can still be doing a bunch of planning for the next year because as we know, farmers, they never really take a break. We're always planning for the future. Um, but in the fall, our students are going to host a community harvest gala. So the objective will be that all the, the livestock is in harvest weight, uh, finished weight by the end of September. Uh, we'll have produce from our garden. The kids at Urban School, one of their options classes is uh, uh, catering and event planning. So those students are gonna plan this event. We'll welcome the community in business, you know, people from business, people from the community. We're gonna have a livestock auction. So they'll host a live auction. They'll kind of like a 4-H format. We'll show the steers. They'll talk about what they've done. Uh, we're going to sell all the livestock off. That'll be our key fundraiser because the Egg Discovery Center in, it, in and of itself needs to be sustainable. So we'll use that as our fundraiser and we'll sell tickets to a meal that'll be catered by the students. And then we'll have key members of that student body who will be doing presentations, PowerPoints, videos, and just teach them how to tell their story because we know that uh, telling a story is the best way to teach people. It, it uh, you know, a lot of things we try and convey in agriculture based on, you know, science and scientific fact, but we know that people are motivated to change based on feelings and emotions. And, and so this is, this is going to be a great place to tell that story. So just in a nutshell, that's what we're going to be up to. Uh, we're, we're super excited and uh, we're really, really uh, at Newbauer Farms. We're just so thrilled to have the opportunity to partner with Prairie Rose Public Schools, their leadership. They are visionaries. They see how education can, it doesn't have to be static. It can be very dynamic and it can move in different directions. So we're grateful for this partnership and this incredible opportunity. Mm -hmm.